This message is brought to you by DoNotAge.org, the longevity research organisation that's on a mission to extend health span for as many people as possible via products that actually work. Start your journey today at DoNotAge.org and use code LAMA for a 10% discount. That's L-L-A-M-A. So let's get going. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Llama Live. Llama is the Live Long and Master Aging podcast. We're a podcast that focuses on the science and stories behind human longevity, purposeful aging, and well being. This is our third conversation, courtesy of Twitter Spaces. Thanks to everyone who has offered feedback, at least from a, a technical perspective, over the last few weeks. And I'm hoping that this platform will soon be more widely available so you can take part from a tablet, from a desktop browser, as well as your phone. And I'm also grateful for the comments that we've received about the editorial content, the things that we've been talking about, very open to ideas for subjects in the future. And thanks also if you've listened to the podcast after the live conversation. We've had quite a lot of downloading, so I'm I'm very grateful for that. And if this is your first time, the idea is that these will be 30-minute maximum conversations to focus on a specific subject that's relevant to healthy ageing. I don't talk too much about reversing ageing. I prefer to look forwards and embrace the process while staying as healthy as possible. And with that in mind, I want to talk about life hacks. We've touched on biohacking quite a lot on the podcast, but what does that really mean? And I think my main point would be that you don't have to be a Silicon Valley guru to embrace biohacking, if that's what you want to call it. The hacking of lifestyles has been going on for decades, centuries perhaps, and can simply mean small changes that enhance our daily lives. One hack that I try to remember on my morning walk is to simply take off my sunglasses so I can get or at least take a full advantage of the way that sunlight nurtures my circadian rhythm by exposing eyes to bright light early in the morning. Your brain gets the message that it's time to suppress melatonin production, increase cortisol production, and that energises your morning. It's a hack that's based on science. There are a multitude of things that you could do in terms of hacking your lifestyle. It could be just waking up five minutes early. It could be swapping green tea for your first cup of coffee. It could be walking during meetings instead of sitting at the office. So that's the kind of thing I'd like to talk about. And uh, thanks if you're just joining us now. And uh, I want to bring in, and I'm going to refer to people by the Twitter handles, and then you can tell me exactly who you are and, and get involved in the conversation. But I see uh, now Jevity is with us. And uh, I know this is Roy. And if Roy, if you want to pop on your microphone, uh, you can explain to us who you are. And I know you produce, you've got a deep interest in longevity. You produce a fascinating newsletter every week on that subject. So uh, hello, good to talk to you. Hi, Peter. Thanks. Thanks for inviting me. Um, Yes, I I am. I guess I'm I'm a self-ascribed longevity enthusiast. And it just became a, a personal interest of mine a couple of years ago, and I started Nojevity about a year ago as a passion project um, to really share with folks, you know, initially my friends and family, and it's just been growing since then. You know, like you mentioned, tips, tricks, hacks to uh, help people live healthier and longer lives. And Nojevity was really inspired by by two realizations, Peter. One is just, you know, fully absorbing how uh, badly our healthcare system is failing us in this in the turn in the context of prevention. Um, the system is very good at maintaining us alive and managing diseases, but not very focused on prevention. And then at the same time, you know, there is, is such a, a fast advancement of uh, longevity science and practices, you know, wearables, things that anybody can do today to really get on top of their health game. So we see such a big gap between those two things that that's what longevity is trying to fill. And what's been the reaction? I'm just curious, Roy, in terms of uh, what people say to you, your newsletter really dives quite deeply into some of these subjects. And I'm wondering in terms of a response that you get, and you've raised some of the issues there, what do people say? I think people, by and large, um, have difficulty accessing information that they feel that they can trust. There is so much noise out there, especially on on social media, on Instagram, et cetera, about different 
sort of magic uh, avenues to to reverse aging or do this or that. And I think there are just a lot of bad actors out there. And so the the number one feedback that we get is that people really like that we provide science based information and tips and 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 recommendations, and they feel that they can trust that information. So that that's one of the biggest things that that we're combating. Um, and then secondarily, I think you know we cover what we call the four pillars of uh, longevity, which is nutrition, exercise, uh, science, and mental wellness. And I think what people really love is not only understanding the sort of processes that affect each one of those pillars from a scientific perspective, but also really like the fact that they can then take that knowledge and apply it in some very specific way to their daily lives. And one point that I always try to make to people, and hopefully I made it just now, and that is that we, when we talk about hacking our lifestyles, the, the, the phrase hacking is, is a relatively new one. It just means potentially making very small changes. And in many senses, we don't need, and I often say this, we don't need new science to understand the benefits of, of some of the basics. And that is a, a balanced, a good balanced diet and regular exercise, those changes can be very small and you could still define them as as hacking your lifestyle. Yeah, I tend to agree with you. I think uh, hacking really came, it was more of a, a much narrower kind of focus of people trying to, uh, you know, really enhance the performance. But hacking, you know, as you mentioned at the top, I think it could be any any change of habit that you can implement with the purpose of, you know, even if slightly improving your, your day-to-day health. And from your experience and uh, looking at some of the things that the newsletter has been talking about in, in the last few months, what are the most, what do you get the best response to? What are the most popular hacks that are, are relatively easy to do? So this, this may not be in the relatively easy to do scale you know, at the bottom of that scale, but it's something that is it garnered a lot of interest from our audience, which is just trying to monitor your blood sugar in a more consistent basis. And there are a number of, um, products out there now are called continuous glucose monitors, which as the name suggests, you can they can really help you track how your uh, glucose levels, your sugar levels react to different activities, obviously eating or exercising or sleeping or not sleeping. And the reason I mentioned that is because as we age, uh, rising uh, glucose levels and, and insulin resistance really sits upstream from a lot of the chronic diseases that are characterize uh, aging cardiovascular disease, um, uh, cognitive decline, diabetes, and, and obesity, et cetera. So that might be the most impactful hack that, that we've, you know, we talk about a lot. And, and I think people are really curious to see how to adopt it. I think that's interesting you should say that. And uh, very coincidentally, the next episode of this podcast released early next week will be on that very subject. And there really has been a boom in interest in in the whole area of of glucose and, of course, diabetes and and, and being able to manage that situation yourself. And uh, the technology, the the rate at which the pace at which that technology is moving is quite incredible. And uh, I'd like just to bring in Dr. Felice Gersh, Felice, regular guest on the podcast, who I see has just joined us. Uh, Felice, thank you. Good to speak to you again. Well, happy to join you, Peter. On this subject of of hacking, and we're talking about continuous glucose monitoring, is this something that uh, is a frequent topic with the, the patients that you see? I prescribe it every single day. We don't really know how uniquely people are going to respond to what they unless that, especially in people who have uh, elevation of their fasting blood sugar or hemoglobin A1C or insulin levels. We now know that the gut microbiome can uniquely affect how you, each individual responds to the same food as someone else eats so that you and I could eat the exact same apple at the exact same time of the day and have quite different responses with our glucose responses. So it is really a very prevalent part of the practice that I now incorporate. And just more generally on this topic, Felice, of of hacks and and daily hacks, and I I try to make the point that hacks don't have to be complicated. I think that they're fascinating when they do include some new technology like continuous glucose monitoring, but it doesn't have to be difficult. And I think that's a, a key point to get over, that we can make small changes to our daily lifestyles that actually could make big differences to our health span and the number of years that we live and enjoy good health. Well, my personal biohacks are very low tech. 
So my personal favorite, it, when I get home from work, I make a big mug. It's like almost like a soup bowl size mug that is organic hot cocoa. And we know that there are some major health benefits from organic cocoa. And then I put in a little bit of organic soy milk. And to me, it's just the perfect end of a day after I get home before I have dinner. So it's like my pick me up and also my calm me down sort of simultaneously. Another favorite um, biohack for me is when I wash the dishes, I put on dance music. And so I'm just kind of going to the music while I'm washing the dishes and cleaning up. And um, so I get a little physical activity and it's just, you know, just, just feels great to listen to the music. And then my other one is I love long calming, soaking hot baths. And often while I'm relaxing in the bathtub, I'm listening to like your podcast or other <laughs> or sometimes it could be uh, Seth, Seth Meyers, you know, I'm listening to some something funny. So and it's just calming, sometimes just music. So these are very low tech ways of really enhancing my health. And there's nothing that's more important than mental health. And of course, combined with physical and, and all of this sort of combines all of the above. I think they're great ideas. That's something I heard the other day, actually, this is a British doctor was talking on a podcast. And he said that one of the hacks that he implements every day, probably twice a day, because he does it while he's cleaning his teeth, is to stand on one leg. So for the a minute, minute and a half, whatever duration that he cleans his teeth for, he's standing on one leg. And the reason behind that, and maybe you can elaborate, is that obviously as we get older, one of the things that becomes more difficult is balance. And that if we can practice that on a daily basis or a twice daily basis, that we can really reap the rewards of that as we grow older. Oh, that is a wonderful hack. And then like for me, another sort of comparable to try to have some muscle strength is that I do stand up for so when I do all of my telemedicine, which now is about half of my day, I never sit down. So I got a, a sort of an elevator type of a lift for my computer. So it's more or less at the right mm -hmm. height, I like getting my back into contorted positions while I'm doing my typing into the computer. And I stand for it for hours at a time. But while I'm standing, I don't want to just stand totally still. So I do the same thing. I like stand on one leg, I'll kind of like march in place, you know, and kind of move a little bit around. So it's uh, every little bit that we do, we know that people who fidget, this is kind of like a little bit of a modification of fidgeting, actually burn calories and actually stay healthier. So who knew that fidgeting was actually a biohack? Yeah, I agree. And I suppose that comes down to the, the, the other the hack that uh, I think I alluded to at the beginning, and, and that is just constant movement. So you might choose to have a, a walking meeting. If you're back in the office, well, step outside of the office as opposed to inviting someone inside to sit around your conference table and just go for a walk around the block or the nearest park just to incorporate some walking in your day. Because I, I think, and there's probably no better time than now to talk about this as we're all changing our lifestyles, at least to some extent, back to what they used to be. We've been used to being at home and not seeing people. We're now seeing people. And I think it's important to remember that uh, incorporating movement is, is so crucially important. Well, and I love that you said that you take off the sunglasses for a little while while you're walking because sunlight, and we've talked about this, it's like happy medicine. So my normal office at my in my office where I used to like sit and do some computer work had no windows because I chose the worst space in the office because I didn't really spend any time there. But now that I'm doing telemedicine, I moved to another room and I took over an exam room that has a nice big window so that I have sunlight coming into my workspace. So I'm not like in a closet. It. And we should all, you know, try to incorporate sunlight into our lives as well. So I love that idea of when you go out, we don't want to always cover our eyes. We want to have some sun exposure to our skin, into our eyeballs so that our retina pick up the light and send it. It also not only helps us make more serotonin and then we feel happy and then we sleep better because we make more melatonin, but um, as well, it helps to set our circadian rhythm, which is so important. And so many of us live in a world where we don't get enough proper cues with light and dark and are we eating at the wrong times. And that is so important to stay aligned with the proper circadian rhythm. And we'll continue this conversation in just a moment. 
Hey, quick question for you. Are you someone who wants to be fit, healthy, and happy? And what if I told you you could get your dream body by simply just listening to a podcast? I'm Josh. And I'm KG, and we are the hosts of the Fit, Healthy, and Happy podcast. Listen, we get it. Fitness isn't easy. Carbs, no carbs. Just stop, okay? It doesn't have to be that complicated. And that's why we made this podcast. We get straight to the facts so you can become your best you. So the way to check us out is click the link in the show notes or go search Fit, Healthy, and Happy podcast on any of the major podcast platforms. We'll see you soon. Yeah. Uh, Roy, uh, from uh, Nogevity, I, I just wanted to, this is a little aside, but the, the title of your newsletter, Nogevity or Nowgevity, depending on how you pronounce that, I'm just curious how you came to that name. Oh, Nogevity is a bit of a, I guess, a fusion between the word, you know, desire to people to prompt people to act now to gradually improve their health so they can stay healthier for longer. And, you know, what I like about this conversation is is really the focus on one of the hardest things that people face when they're trying to improve their health is, is because these are all lifestyle hacks, it's just building the habit. And so breaking it into small things that you could easily do that may take just a couple of minutes to stand on one leg or the other and doing that consistently over time is what longevity is all about. And I think there is a sense, uh, perhaps looking on from the outside to people in the the longevity space or longevity industry, whatever you want to call it, that it is all, or to some extent, it's futuristic and it is things you can perhaps do in the future or uh, longer term lifestyle changes. And and I suppose one of the most important points is, and I, and I like the way that you incorporate the word now, because we are living now. And I think that is sometimes lost isn't it that it's it's not just about living a very long time it's it's living now and living our lives to the full and, and enjoying full health now and that, and that's where these daily instant lifestyle hacks come in yeah absolutely and and i really think that you know we we're mostly being conditioned to take a somewhat passive approach to our health and, and what i mean by that is we're just you know we only seek doctors or, or we only seek to improve our health once we're uh, well, not only, but usually is when we fall ill. And so rather than waiting to for that to happen, for you to develop some sort of chronic condition, if you can start taking small steps now, then you could really make a huge difference over time because it could really bend the curve or progression of any any type of pro, uh, chronic disease. I'll just mention another one of my uh, lifestyle hacks and maybe get both of you to respond to this. And it's so simple and it's many times talked about. And that is the fact that when we drive somewhere, there's still, and I'd notice it every single day in the parking lot for the shopping mall or the, the market or the doctor's office or wherever you're going, that everyone crowds into the parking spaces so close to the front door. Why not go to the back? It is so obvious that it almost doesn't need mentioning, but why not go to the back of the the parking lot? And so few people still do that. And I almost try to make it a game with myself to choose the furthest away parking space and actually arrive a little bit early and walk around the block before I go into the the building. And, And Felice, I mean, it sounds so simple, but just adding those extra daily steps to your lifestyle can make such a difference. Absolutely. And one of the things that made me sad when I changed office is that now I'm on the, the ground floor because in my previous office, I was actually on the fifth floor. So I never took this, the elevator. And yes, people would be standing there waiting to get into the elevator. It would be so crowded. And the stairs, which were kind of ugly. You know, it's unfortunate that sometimes in these uh uh, medical office buildings or businesses that they put the staircase in a way that it's still like, kind of hidden and it's not really very pretty. But I would go and I'd find the, you know, I took the staircase and I would go up the five flights and, you know, it was usually at least a couple of times a day, I'd have to go down and run to the hospital. And I think that just taking the stairs, parking further away and, um, you know, just walking around your house, like I, I actually rude the day <laughs> that, that, They actually created remote controls. When they first came out, I said, what is this? You can't get up and walk over to the TV and change the channel. Like you have to have a remote. So I think, you know, like just running up and down stairs in your house and, you know, just walking around. And that's where, you know, the beauty, I know you have an adorable dog as I've seen the pictures and, you know, having a dog is so great. You know, that would be a great biohack for people to just take lots of walks with their dog. And if you don't have a dog, 
find a neighbor and then take walks as well. Walk your neighbor. Yeah, I'm with you, especially with you on dogs. And I think I've mentioned this a trillion times on the podcast. That's the first activity of my day is going for an hour long walk with my dog and and going before breakfast as well. And there's there's a very it's almost cathartic that that very special hour. Uh, Someone I was talking to recently on the podcast referred to it as their golden hour, the, the, the first hour of their day where they nurture their mental health as as much as their physical health. I want to bring in Des, who has uh, been listening to us uh, from the beginning. Uh, Des, hi. Thanks for joining us. Hi there, Peter. Hi, hi everybody. Um, I'm, I'm back here in the UK, Peter. So um, what, it, what it is, um, it's really interesting this, to be honest, because I am your classic example. Um, I've always been quite sporty up until the year um, 2005. And uh, unfortunately, I had a bit of a breakdown. And drinking drugs was never an issue, not at all. It was food. And with the breakdown, I lost all motivation. And I stopped playing football, stopped playing cricket, stopped running. And I'm actually talking to you from a nursing home. I'm only 50. Um, I developed leg ulcers because of my obesity. Over the last couple of months, and this is the first time in such a, such a long, long time, I have changed my dietary habits. And it has helped with the mental health. The serotonin that uh, your colleague mentioned, it's its there. I've got enthusiasm again. Do you know what I mean? We're just doing small yeah. things. And it's yeah. like being able to – I still can't walk that far at the moment because of my obesity, but just going out in the fresh air. And as you say, uh, with the lockdown, it was difficult. But it's definitely there that we can do stuff now, do you know? Yeah, I, I'm with you. What are the what, what has made the biggest difference to you of those little things that you can incorporate into your daily life? I hope this doesn't sound um, basically part of the problem with my mental health was my motivation, as I say, had gone. And I've been living by myself for 15, 16 years. <coughs> Hygiene was a problem. And it's small things like having a shower. When I was working, you just have a shower every morning, don't you? You don't even think about it. But um, what I'm doing here is I am literally doing small things like that. I'm looking after myself a lot more. And that does give you confidence that you can do this, do you know? Yeah. And do you find that when you when you master doing something different, uh, whether it's as, as small as just taking a more regular shower, that that uh, actually motivates you to think of other things you can do? Very much so. It just gives you more that you want to do something. I've Because the thing is, although I live, I've got a huge family, um, and I've got a daughter who actually turns 21 tomorrow. So um, it's that as well. And plus where I'm moving to is a five-minute walk to the beach. And it's just like perfect, do you know? So I've just got so much, for the first time in years, I've got enthusiasm for doing the small things first, do you know? Yeah, I, I hear what you say. And uh, thanks for raising that because it really does... Certainly, Felice, maybe you've got a thought on this. It does uh, alert us to the idea that, you know, when we're talking about lifestyle hacks and talking about new technology, and sometimes it can kind of go over the heads of people that it's too difficult to achieve. But we're hearing from Des that very, very simple, small steps every day can really make a, a difference and be very motivating. I think that it's really telling what Des was saying, how he combines the health issues with the mental health, the physical with the mental, because his obesity is both a cause and an effect on his mental health. And yes, these little things can really change how you frame your life, right? So if you look at something as an opportunity instead as an, of as an obstacle, everything can be totally turned around. And that's really what Des is doing. He's looking at things as potential opportunities instead as obstacles. And and I think for somebody like Des, a little wonderful biohack maybe to keep a gratitude journal and write down five things every day that make you happy and that have happened that are good. Because sometimes you can get lost in all the negatives. And now Des is looking at all the, the happiness that can happen when you take little steps and he's seeing the results. So sometimes that is really the key to being happy and having healthy longevity is looking at all the good things that you have in life and keeping track of them and then trying to grow them. Des, does that sound like something that you might like to to incorporate into your daily life? Well, I, I appreciate the, the words. Unfortunately, 
when I when I was first hospitalised, I was in a private hospital for a few months, and they were very big on mood diaries. And what I found is it doesn't work for me. I'm no good at writing things down, um, but I, I I do put it. I, I keep it in my head, and I do keep these little targets, if you like. And especially in the last couple of months, as I say, things are improving, and it is just like. Um, Set my, I'm thinking, I don't want to sound dramatic, but I'm thinking about the future. And it is just like, you can do this today, you can do that. It's like walking. As you say, that's the big thing for me. I used to love walking. I was brought up in London. And even though we had the tubes and the buses, I would walk everywhere. Um, so it's just getting back on track with that. And as I say, the beach, that's my, that's my, one of my coping strategies. That I love the beach. Des, I'm, I'm really grateful for you sharing that with us and I, I it is inspiring to know that uh, there are little things and that with the determination that you clearly have you can make a difference it's definitely the first time in, in years peter honestly i've done the empty threats about going to diet clubs and all that sort of stuff but my heart hasn't been in it but i am determined now to do something so but anyway yeah well look thank you for sharing that and really all the all the best with the, the coming days months and years it sounds like you're on the right track so good luck with it thank you cheers good to talk to you uh, roy we're going to draw this to a close in a few moments i mean that story that we've just heard from des it really does bring it home to me talking bigger picture in terms of how people need help people need information of the kind that you're sharing in your newsletter. And we don't have to be talking big, dramatic changes. It is the little things that for, for a lot of people and a lot of people struggling with physical and mental health as we come out of the, the pandemic and, and hopefully can move forward from that. But it is, it is sometimes the very little things that people need reminding about. And, and this is the kind of thing that as well as talking about the technology in your newsletter, we're reminding people of the, the smaller things as well. Absolutely. And I really think that, you know, sometimes you know, when we're we're trying to reverse some condition or some situation we're unhappy with, it, it can really feel daunting. It can really feel daunting if you, you know, say, haven't worked out in, in two, three years to really start doing it again. Um, so maybe I would say I would close with this. And I think uh, perhaps the, one of the most useful tools that, that we've seen people react to is how to create uh, new habits. And, and there's a few books out there. Tiny Habits is one of them that they are based on behavioral science and and really what they really emphasize is just what you uh, just said um, you're trying to build a new habit just make sure you break it into the smallest possible piece and and repetition is really what gives you the strength and confidence to over time uh, change the outcome and it's you know, I remember from that book that the author speaks about you know, tiny habits are like compounding interest. You know, it, it may not make a massive difference on a day-to-day -day basis, but if you stick to them over time, you could really bend the curve of your current trajectory. I think that's a really useful thought. And uh, we are going to publish this conversation as a, a podcast in the next 24 hours. And I think people can gain a lot from what is a very positive and, and very simple message. Just in closing, Roy, in terms of uh, longevity, the newsletter that you send out, how can people find you and uh, how can they get involved? Oh, yeah. Thank you, uh, Peter. Um, you can find us at nowgevity.me and you can subscribe to the newsletter there. And uh, we're also on, on Twitter and social media in general at, at nowgevity. I think it's a well worth subscribing it's well worth reading it is free to subscribe and, that, and that's great that information like this is available for everyone to see so roy thank you felice thank you for joining us again and, and des especially thank you for sharing your story we're going to wrap it up here i'm planning to have these conversations on a regular basis and i'm really hoping to nurture a community of regular contributors so you're very welcome to come back week after week we can talk about different aspects of human longevity and you know the range of topics that we can discuss is quite infinite so thank you for being here today or for downloading the podcast and we'll talk again soon health optimization is what this podcast is all about and that means taking care of our mitochondria the energy centers of our cells physical strength avoiding frailty is key and that's why the science behind urolithin A and the work of Timeline Nutrition 
is so interesting. You can find out more and get a discount code at our website and in the show notes for this episode.